Here, I'll help you. Ready? My name is Selena Rushton. I'm 64 years old. I'm going to tell my story. When something looks unsurvivable, in fact, you can survive and you can live. Before my diagnosis, I was the top producer in the West Coast for the company I worked with. And yet, I was just nip and tuck, just dragging. And I had no idea how far burned out I was getting. The cancer was found metastatic in my lungs first. And I was just startled because, I mean, the first thing I started thinking about is I've never been a smoker. So Selena presented pretty significant widespread metastatic disease involving her lungs and um, lymph nodes. And she also had some other metastatic sites um, in the gynecologic tract as well. So it was, it was you know, pretty significant. And that was when they knew with other blood tests and activities that I had cervical vaginal cancer. When Selena was first diagnosed, she um, was under the care of Dr. Peters, who you know is a, a very well known in the field, and he initiated her standard treatment, which is chemotherapy. I was grateful my oncologist did not give me a timeline and say, "Oh, you've got exactly nine months and you're out of here." But the prognosis was grave. Everything was a rush. It was like get ready to die because. I'm not going to make it out of this. I'm going to be in treatment for the remainder of my life, whatever that life span is going to be. When the word cancer is thrown out there, you, you don't hear anything after that. What I love about the providers here is that they watch for physical needs and also for emotional or existential distress. So how I met Selena, a nurse asked me to come down and see this patient who was, in her words, depressed. What I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce a different concept. I'd like to say to them that there's grieving, mourning, and there's sadness. Because I mentioned that to her. I said to her, you're grieving. And I didn't even realize that's what I was doing. Sylvia pointed it out as a possibility for me, and boy, it just hit home. It hit home hard. I felt Sylvia was an angel in terms of introducing me to the support services that Swedish has, and I was able to work through my grief, my grief of my life was over, my life, my job, my everything was different and I needed to find a way to be at peace with it every single day. I needed to love myself through this process and love myself in spite of needing to accept support, you know, needing to trust my physicians, needing to know that I wasn't alone. At nine months, I was told that I was NED, no evidence of disease. I'm trying now again to figure out, do I trust this diagnosis? I'm not 16, I'm not starting over, I'm lost. About 15, 16 months later, I had a little this problem, a little that problem, and I went in, and oh, by the way, your cancers recurred. Dr. Peters actually retired and transitioned um, her care to Dr. Press. Close to the time when he met her, she only had cancer in the cervix. We um, decided it was a good option for her, um, you know, discussing as a multidisciplinary team, to, to offer her the same treatment a woman who presents only with disease in her cervix would have received. So I chose the radiation and brachiotherapy treatments and was referred to Dr. Biscariolo. And 
boy, she's just a little powerhouse. She just lays it out, puts it on the table, and says, you know, here's, here's the action plan. Most people find it very helpful, and, and it does reduce the anxiety to just um, talk about everything. The second phase of internal radiation can be very difficult, especially for women with a history of sexual trauma. The most important thing is to you know, understand where they're coming from and really be very detailed in preparing the person for this experience. You know, so um, having nothing be a surprise, having them feel and know that they're in control. And when I could talk to my doctor and I got the attention I got, she heard me, she understood, you're not being forced into treatment. You're being asked in to participate in your health. And that's crucial. You have choices. And oncology is very much a team sport, so there are a lot of people that go into being able to treat anyone who's coming through our clinic. And a lot of these people, the patient you know, may not see. I got the basis of my art piece down, and I said it's a gift. It's a gift of life. It's a gift to Swedish. It's a gift for the care I received. It's a gift to everyone and everything that touched part of my healing. This is my gift to say thank you.